Between 1573 and 1617, Franz Schmidt worked as the executioner for the city of Nuremberg, and interestingly for us, he left a diary of his time documenting executions, tortures, punishments, and his life. It's an absolutely fascinating insight into the macabre world of a Renaissance period executioner, and there's a lot we can learn from it. Hey everyone, I'm Stefan Milo. If you're into history, archaeology, anthropology, those sorts of things, consider subscribing to the channel because that's what I talk about. All the information today comes from the awesome book, The Faithful Executioner. I highly recommend reading it. There's a link down below. It's a fascinating insight into a world that just doesn't exist anymore. We don't have executioners and crimes and punishments like that, so fascinating stuff. So what can we learn from Franz Schmidt's diary? Well, he didn't wear a mask. Let's dispel that myth right from the off. Although there's some documented evidence of executioners wearing masks, such as the execution of uh, Charles I in England at the end of the uh, English Civil War, generally they did not wear them. He would have worn the usual clothes of a 16th century gentleman, the poofy collar, the padded jacket, the big pantaloons, We've all seen a Shakespeare play. We know what they, uh, what they looked like and he'd have dressed like that. No mask. So how did you become an executioner in that time period? Well, there was basically two ways. The first is you were a reprobate, a drunk, a useless guy, a scumbag. You didn't care what job you were doing and had no social standing you might become an executioner, particularly in small towns that couldn't afford a full-time executioner. They might just pick the local scumbag and get him to do it. Interestingly, this was not the case for Franz Schmidt. Franz's father had actually been forced to hang three people by the uh, Margrave of Brandenburg Kulmbach, Albrecht II, a notorious tyrant, he actually picked Franz's father out of the crowd, forced him to hang three people. He had no choice but to comply. And once he had done that, his life as a woodsman was over. Once you had been tainted by the, the brush of an execution, there was a huge social stigma against you. It was the only trade for you from then on out. And uh, Franz was actually trained by his father to continue his job as an executioner, knowing full well that there was little option for him. As a young kid, Franz would practice executions on dogs, hanging and beheading dogs and other animals. So, so Franz actually inherited the position and it was just uh, his father's bad luck that brought this dishonor to their family. How many people did Franz kill? Well, over his 45 year career, he executed 361 people, which if you do the maths, crunch those numbers, that works out to just about eight people a year. Many executions were done on multiple people on the same day. So if you think about it, he was not really performing executions on a daily, weekly, or even monthly basis. These happened pretty infrequently. Now, eight people a year is still a lot more than uh, we kill now, considering this is just talking about one town, but it's, uh, he was not doing this on a daily basis. So how did he kill the people that he was uh, forced to kill? Well, most of the executions were hangings or beheadings. However, in extreme circumstances, France would kill people using this method known as the wheel. This was reserved for particularly horrific murderers, premeditated murder, things like that. Basically, the, the punishment had two parts to it. The first, the convicted would be dragged through the street on a wagon or perhaps on a sled, and uh, Franz would be pulling pieces of flesh off them with these uh, red hot tongs. Horrible stuff. The number of uh, pinchings, I guess, for want of a better term, would be decided by the court. Typically it was about three, much more than that, and the uh, person might die on the wagon before they're executed. When they uh, were at the execution ground, the, uh, the guilty party would be tied down and a wheel from a wagon, those big wooden wheels that they would have, would be used to smash his bones one by one. Horrific punishment, I can't even imagine smashing my bones like that, Ugh. If the criminal was lucky, the executioner would start at their head. 
knocking them out or perhaps even killing them in one blow. If they were unlucky, the executioner would start at their feet and uh, work their way up bone by bone. <sighs> and this was all watched by members of the public as well. We, we have no comprehension of what that would be like. Finally, after their uh, bodies had been broken, they would be strapped to the wheel and the wheel would be uh, put aloft on a pole and their body would just be left there to rot, basically. Now the wheel didn't always kill people and there's some documented evidence of people surviving three or four days with all of their bones broken strapped to the wheel. Can't imagine how much that would sting. It's just a stinger. There's no other word for it. It's just an absolute stinger. Outside of uh, torturing and uh, executing people, Franz made a good living practicing medicine, which sounds strange to us that an executioner would also practice medicine, but at the time, visiting a doctor was extremely expensive and still is extremely expensive if you live in America like I do. Some things never change. Due to the nature of his work, Franz was very familiar with the human anatomy and people who couldn't afford a doctor would often visit barbers, that's where the phrase barber surgeon comes from, and executioners, people like that, like Franz, and also medicine women, local women in the area who kind of practiced folk medicine, traditional medicine. At this time, however, that was a very dangerous occupation, extremely dangerous. You did not want to be a middle-aged woman practicing medicine in the 16th century. You could be tried as a witch. Fortunately, in Nuremberg, that did not happen very often. So what happened to Franz later on in life? Well, Franz, due to his diligence at his job and his uh, determination to restore his family's honor, he was actually the role model of an executioner. And he didn't drink. He didn't gamble, he, he led a Christian life uh, as much as possible considering he killed people. Although in that period they wouldn't have considered that a contradiction. It was a perfectly Christian job to be an executioner. He would not be destined for hell. But yeah, due to his uh, diligence and his good life, when Franz, Franz retired and was allowed to practice medicine, and then when he finally died, he was given a state funeral and buried in the prestigious cemetery of Nuremberg. So he did succeed in restoring his family's honor. His son was allowed to continue practicing medicine. He didn't have to follow in his father and grandfather's footsteps of becoming an executioner. So all in all, Franz did his job, did his duty, we may think of it now as uh, horrific, but at that time, that's what he did. And he restored his family's honor and lived the best life that he could under extremely difficult circumstances. So that's all I've got for you. There's far more information in uh, this book. Definitely worth a read. Over here, there'll be a video. There'll be the subscribe button. You know what to do at the end of a YouTube video. If you want to watch another one, click on it. If you want to subscribe, do that. The choice is yours. You will not be hanged, whatever you choose. See you guys. Thanks for watching.